Parkinsonian tremor. Now, why do I say Parkinsonian tremor, but not like rigidity or um, uh, bradykinesia or hypokinesia? Because this is the one that you can see very easily. First off, you can't see rigidity. So if somebody looks at a some patient and says, oh, I see that they're rigid, they're wrong, because you can't see rigidity. The only way you can determine rigidity is to test for it. And to test for it, uh, you have to actually move a limb or a joint and then feel for the rigidity. What I usually do, the most common one, is I usually use the arm and I place... Uh, again, I'm getting up and down a lot. This is more than I do. Okay, so I place a thumb on the biceps tendon. And then I move the arm and tell the patient, don't move. Don't exert any kind of force at all. What you should feel is it should feel like a well-oiled joint, all right? If there's rigidity there, you may feel a resistance to that. If the Parkinsonism has a tiny bit, there's actually two tremors in Parkinsonism, by the way. There's the tremor that is the four to seven cycle per second trill pill rolling, and there's another tremor that's a little higher frequency at around eight cycles per second that you typically don't see. But that tremor, if that's there, on top of rigidity, will give you a cogwheel phenomenon, okay? So cogwheeling is rigidity with a tremor mechanism on top of it. Boom, 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 boom. And that's because when you measure the cogwheeling, it occurs at about eight cycles per second, right? And it's often the best way of determining whether or not there is rigidity present. 